everyone and welcome back this week we are putting the diesel heater in um, to connect to the radiators it's a Makuna unit which is suitable for wet central heating systems So the unit's being placed in the um, engine bay and we've put uh, some marine ply boards up around um, the bay in different areas ready for stuff to be screwed onto it rather than having to keep drill into the steel bulkhead. This is a um, MX50 from MV Heating based down in Southampton in the UK. Um, and this is a five kilowatt diesel heater, which is going to provide the heating for the hot water and the radiators. Right, this is going to fit the air in intake to the uh, heater. I spoke to the guys at MV Heating to see if it's okay to shorten this pipe, and he says, "Yeah, no problem. It's only only issue you have is if you want to extend it. So we're not extending it. We can shorten that so that." If I can fasten this onto this piece of wood then, so I can cut that to length now. Little bracket that fits around there, and I can screw that. This second pipe was uh, a lot easier to, to get in. Um, the clips are really hard to do when you're trying to push the pipe and put the clip in. Is that all right for hitting that pipe down there? It's not too far away from the water. It's, it's just my th thickness of my finger against the wall. In fact, just, uh, I'll just do this temper for now. onto that part then. Okay. And then we could just get that and cut that off to length there. Yeah, am I letting it go? Yeah. The pipe I'm using is 22mm speed fit from John Guest. 
I won't push it in with that hand. Right, so I'm looking. Nice. All this pipe work isn't going to be seen um, once it's all finished the the steps going up to the stern will cover all that main area um, it'll be a solid step the first one but the rest of the steps will be move removable um, but this one will hide all those bits of pipes and everything that are coming through the bulkhead from the engine bay The main feed from the heater comes into the boat, drops down to that T-piece and then splits and one way goes towards the radiators and obviously the other way goes off towards the chlorifier for the hot water. And for anyone not knowing what a chlorifier is, it's that big blue tank and it's a um, water tank really isn't Just it? Just stored hot water tank yeah. Yeah, yeah. Same as in a house but this one's for a boat. How does that work then? Uh, right. <laughs> uh, the hot water from the engine bay from the diesel heater comes into the boat, yeah. tees off, goes off to the calorifier, the hot water cylinder, and it enters, it goes in the top connection and comes out the bottom of connection. But the actual water that's flowing through there isn't connected to the heat, the water that comes out of your hot taps. It's separated by like a copper coil of it's a coil of pipe inside yeah so that the water isn't directly heating the water in the cylinder right in the calorifier so yeah it just transfers the heat from the coil into the stored water that's in the in the tank yeah might be a little bit confusing because uh, you can see there's two black pipes there as well and the reason for those is we've got a what they call a twin coil calorifier so not only does it heat the water from the diesel eater the black pipes as you might have seen in the previous vlog they're fed off the engine so when the engine's running the same principle there's another coil of uh, copper in there which will do the same thing as the heating pipes off the diesel heater so the so the water heats up through those back yeah. out again in and out basically a flow return a hot in and a cold returning back to be reheated yeah so it's all just like a circulation yeah it just circulates through right. i get it now
This next bit was a little bit awkward because we've got to run behind the colorify at the side up to uh, the little plastic header tank. And that tank is used to fill the central heating and also as a way to uh, let air escape from the system when you're filling the system up. And you just top that up now and again if ever the water level in there drops below a certain level. Yeah, why would that drop? Any reason? No, it's just it's, it might evaporate a little bit out of the other tank, or um, as as it circulates around the radiators, it, it might it might drop a bit. But once the system's full, it should really stay sort of full. There's a there's a thing on it, isn't there? There's a minimum, a minimum and maximum, maximum yeah. so you have to keep it in with in in that those bit. lines. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this? I have no idea. I saw it the other day I thought I don't know what the hell that's for. I think that's stuck on there for... we haven't put anything on there. I think that's stuck on there by mistake. It is. That's just something that's been left in here I bet. It's flipped up. Is there something underneath it? Beautiful, that is. Mm. Must have like been resting in the cupboard and then it's got pushed on there. Now we all know where Grandad puts his chewing gum. <laughs> <laughs> Not on the bedpost overnight, on the wall. So what I'm doing here is I'm fitting this red valve, which is going to be a bypass valve. Um, you can go straight up into the header tank and out the header tank um, back to the uh, diesel heater. But we're fitting this bypass valve in so that uh, it sort of bypasses the tank, if you like. Uh, it still allows the air to vent through the tank, but gives it a, a, an easier route back to the boiler. start on the fuel line now for the diesel eater uh, and we've got like an auxiliary feed off the tank so we've put a valve in the same as Ian put in for the engine and then it drops down here then it goes into an inline filter which sits just there it doesn't have to be there but it ours is sitting just there and then we've run a pipe across that's going to run in front of these 
here so we can secure the pipe onto there with, with, with clips. So that's going to run on the front of there, across here, and we're just deciding on the position of the fuel pump at the moment because it's got to fit on here, but it's also got to be at a certain angle for it to work correctly. So that's going to just run down and then drop in, go on to that connection just there. And then obviously out goes off to the heater. Oh yeah. Right, what angle is it that they say it's got to be at? Between 15 and 35, I think it is, 33, somewhere in that region. So we've worked on the middle, there's about 22, 22, 22 and a half degrees. So if you get a bit of paper, fold it. That gives you 45 degrees obviously, So, and then if you fold that again, that's going to give you 22 and a half degrees. So that will be your, your angle that your fuel pump needs to sit at. So if I put that line there on the bottom of there, I might need to go shorter actually, won't I? No, I'm not. A bit thick today. If I put that there like that, that gives us the right angle for it to be fitted at. And if I just put a little mark on there, I know that that's the sort of, that's the angle we're going to fit the pump at. So if we just get on there like so, and then. If we had the angle any bigger, it means that the fuel line starts to dip down, don't it? Yeah. It's harder for us to fit in, so that's why we've gone with 22. So the idea, what you're trying to do is, from your fuel tank, your pipe is constantly running up. Or as close to a rise as possible, um, even if it's straight, but then starting to go yeah. up. So much stuff in here. Um, we would have preferred to have this on the other side, but we just couldn't fill it in. You're restricted by a lot of stuff, aren't you? You've got to have, from your fuel tank to your pump, has got to be within... Uh, between half a metre and 1.2 metres. So this cable, this cable, this part now is going to run across here. And then into that heater. Trying to avoid as many bends as we can, really.
So that's a fuel line fitted, so isolation valve, fuel filter, runs along the top of the counter plate and then into the fuel pump just there. Straight out of the fuel pump, comes round, probably not able to see that very well, but comes round the back of the battery, side of the battery tray, clipped all the way around the boat there and then it just continues to, to rise all the way along there up and then there's just like a nice sweeping bend rather than tight bends going into the heater got to be clipped up again another clip to go in there and all those cables that are from the wiring loom from the heater they're all going to be tidied up and put out of the way we then had to work out where the exhaust pipe was going um i suggest i suggested into alias side of the bed but <laughs> probably that's not a good idea i bet you did <laughs> um anyway we decided not my side of the bed Ada's side of the bed no we ended up finding a place um but it meant us going across the top of the engine bay the the ceiling of the engine bay um that was the only way we could find a place for it In these shots, you can see the diesel pipe um, is sort of like quite near the exhaust. That's where we originally was gonna put the diesel pipe, but we moved it um, because the exhaust was gonna go there. If that went on there like that, yeah, we could put a cable tie through there, couldn't we? Yeah. That'd be good. Okay. What do you need? I've just put a rough, a rough bit of mark there where that wants to be, so we can wrap it around that. So, there somewhere there. Okay. Yeah. You can let that go in the edge. Using the stainless steel cable ties again, the same as what we used around the engine exhaust pipe. Um, they seem really sturdy and really good, but I think there's something that we would have to keep an eye on all the time because um, yeah. they just don't see as, seem as substantial as a, as a proper bracket. bracket yeah. The bit I dread another hole in the boat. What's the most that can happen? We'd have to have it welded up. insulation still got really hot from the exhaust so we're going to add some more blue fiberglass over the whole length a rubber gasket fits on here and it's the same on the inside of the boat too so the hole's been drilled you've seen and I've just painted this yesterday so let that go off 24 hours so back inside the boat now and that's the skin fitting come through so we've just got to put a uh, washer rubber washer seal over that and then the locking nut that goes on the back 
onto there and then the exhaust obviously will come off the top of that and create like a swan neck on the exhaust so no uh, water can come in from outside down the exhaust system okay so now that's connected to the skin fitting clamped on with this clamp and then the skin fitting itself sort of creates a swan neck on the exhaust there so you've got this rise before it comes back along the boat and then continues all the way back round and into the diesel heater just there so that's all connected in now so what's left to do now is uh, connect the um, power cable the feed from the buzz bars inside the boat um, which are going to feed this unit uh, and so I'll go inside now and do all that this is the uh, fuses for the diesel eater so I've just been thinking about where to put this so I decided I think I'm going to put it just there and I can run the negative to this buzz bar and then the positive obviously can go into this buzz bar there and I can just mount that just there out of the way you can connect directly to the batteries but we've decided to use the bus bar and then you've got um, a lead there this one which is going to go into this controller it's just going to plug into there And I'll leave that in the off position. Right, let's see how many uh, leaks I've got. Sounds like my belly. Mm. Seventy thirty water twenty three. This is the uh, programmable room thermostat. Two. Yeah, take two. I've got to take that screw out. Because that cover has to go on there. Take three. The screw was too big if you had that bit on. <laughs> nice pair of matching screws there. That's going to do me head in, isn't it? So now we can set the heater on to come on when we need it to come on. Five minutes in the morning, five minutes at night. Yeah. 
Okay, so these are the leads you've just seen me wire into the room thermostat, and they just call, they just plug into these two, and that's all they're going to do. Just plug into those two connections now. So just make them there. We could test this all now, and then eventually this this uh, control switch is going to be fitted into a, a panel with those with those but we haven't decided where yet so that's the idea we're just going to leave that there for now so that we can just try the heater out and say that that's just plug plugs in from the wiring loom so it's just a case of switching this on there Let's see what happens while after we started running it uh, the red warning light came on say there was no fuel coming through um, so granddad is just purging did you call it I called it a few things but yeah purging <laughs> was one of it <laughs> um, the diesel through the pipe work um, it probably didn't use quite the real health and safety ways of doing it but um he got it working in the end and it was all running fine but it took about four goes didn't it and we yeah, had to yeah yeah try and get that diesel through yeah so if a quarter of a teaspoon should come out every click should it yeah just up every time that click 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 that didn't work he decided to try another way. <laughs> <laughs> 